Now, BBC Two goes on location with Ken Loach to watch director and cast at work on the critically acclaimed Land and Freedom. Now, sound roll number 183, 183 uh, Parallax Pictures, Land and Freedom, number 4 stereo, uh, 15 IPS, CCIR, 22. Anyhow, sounds rolling. Dear Kath, well, I made it. It was a bit dodgy and the sea was rough. Was I glad to get off that ship? Larry, the bloke who smuggled me aboard, he turned up trumps. He got me ashore in one piece at Molesay. Then I thumbed the lift and a couple of lorries to the border. I had to walk miles, all uphill, and now my boots are shot to pieces. I had to creep over the border at night. No passport. I was scared stiff, but I made it. And now I'm in Spain. Hope you're well. We'll write again later. Lots of love. David. Every film you try and build on the ashes of what you've done before and try and do it better. I think you have to come to each job almost with a, with a blank sheet of paper. Not, 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 not an empty head, but at least a blank sheet of paper so that the, the material can dictate its own form and structure and method. Okay, prepare for the The Spanish Civil War was the last of the great causes. When in July 1936, Franco and his generals, supported by Hitler and Mussolini, attacked the democratically elected Republican governments. For the Spanish people, for the Republican dead in this graveyard, the issue was simple and clear cut. It was good against evil. It was fascism against democracy. But the Republic was isolated. It was denied arms, chiefly because of an embargo placed on it by Britain and France. And so volunteers, intellectuals, workers came from all over the world. They crossed oceans, they legally crossed frontiers, they climbed the pyramids to offer their lives in defense of the Republic and to fight fascism. Today, fascism is back on the agenda. The animals are back on the streets. Daily attacks on ethnic minorities growing anti-Semitism, fascist politicians entering their own parliaments, Nazi candidates standing in England in the elections. And so for these reasons, Ken and I considered that this film is topical, it's relative to what is happening throughout the world today. It's about a group of young people who form an international collective we have German, we have Italian, we have French, we have American, we have British. We have a young lad from Liverpool, David, in his 20s. And he's fairly naive. He's got a, a very simplistic view of the good guys and the bad guys. He formed a relationship with a Spanish girl called Blanca. And uh, some of the experience he, he collides with makes you begin to question. In 1936, you have a young and struggling democracy in Spain faced with the threat from the old traditional classes, uh, especially from the army, but also the church, the landowners and so on, who um, rise up against this government to try and overthrow it, install a dictatorship. 
But on the Republican side, the side of democracy is a divided uh, left between those who uh, defended just the idea of a normal liberal democracy and those that thought that, no, here what we're doing is fighting for a new world, not just fighting to defend democracy, uh, but fighting for a revolution. And this was the case of the, the anarchists, uh, the CNT, and of a small party, the POUM, which uh, is at the center of Ken's film. The Puma are the, are the outsiders who were, the, the people who, when the, when the whole thing kicked off, were the people on the right side of the, of the fence. And because the Communist Party wanted to manipulate the government and, and gain power, the Poom had to be sacrificed. So the Poom, yeah, the Poom were like the ones who were nice guys who were completely stabbed in the back. I think it's the most important story of the 20th century, really, how there's been this um, great force that could have changed things, could have changed the world, and it's always been misled and sidetracked and obscured and obfuscated and led up a cul-de-sac. And uh, the, the Spanish experience shows it very clearly, crystallizes it. There have been many or several great opportunities in this century for the people in, to inherit the earth, and that was one of them. And so the reason it didn't happen is the interesting story to tell because it's a remarkable story that I think not many people know just as a story of people who went to fight and how they were sold out. And simply to make a film where the fascists were the bad guys and everybody else were the good guys was, is in the end uninteresting because it's too easy and it hides the real, the villainies that went on on the Republican side and that, that's the tragedy, that's the tragedy. Dear Kit, well, I'm a soldier now with the Poo Militia. There's all sorts here. People from all over the place, women too. Tell Frank that as soon as the party gets organised, I'll jump in with them. It's the same difference anyway, as long as we're fighting fascism. No messing, kid. I wish you'd have been here to see it. The streets were heaving with militiamen and women, cheering and singing. This is the revolution, and I'm proud to be part of it. It's like a breath of fresh air. Okay, good. good. That's good. Okay, that's good. Thanks, all right. I think Ken and Jim. I've been wanting to make this film for decades. I mean, I think it's just always been on their mind. I certainly know at least a decade. The script went through many, many drafts. At first, there wasn't a militia, for instance. You had David and a few other characters. But we realized, I suppose, that Ken is best at working with a group of people. And that this was a golden opportunity to mix up nationalities and put together a sort of team of fighters who would fight for us on the screen and and uh, we could tell the story through them okay. <laughs> right yes but it but nobody must laugh i mean just be absolutely dead ken is involved every step of the way we will discuss a film i will then write it ken then comes to me in manchester and we sit down and we walk on it we sniff and we argue if I'm not getting my way, I take my false teeth out and stick them on the table. Then I'll him sick. Then I'll all smoke in his eyes. But Ken will only agree, and I too will only, if I believe in, 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 in what I'm saying. The director is like the conductor, and you, you've got to sort of galvanise everybody's concentration on one thing. Because if the script is right, and I do it right, then they will respond as they do in the script. The Ken Loach method is basically to shoot in sequence, to tell you the actors nothing, to not hire too many actors because they cause too much trouble, and uh, that's about it, really. And to not get them caravans so they don't disappear during... 
Yeah, not giving during the not... rest. No. But um... if you were filming a prison movie, you'd stay in prison. Exactly. <laughs> because there'd be plenty of beds. You know what I mean? Three meals a day. And it's amazing if you kind of step back and just watch, watch him when he's thinking. Because it's like you can actually see the whole thing. And you can actually see whenever he's kind of looking through something through the lens or something. He's, he, he knows something that we don't know. And that's probably because he's got the script and we don't. If you do get a script, it's the day before. Some people are given different pages. Some people might be given a, a two pages of dialogue that, that I'm involved in, but I won't be given them because for me, it should be a surprise. Sometimes there is a mysterious and strange white page. And, and so you... A blank page. A blank page. <laughs> so I suppose they put a, a white page to, to, to hide what's happening in the end. So he has a very precise idea uh, about what could happen. But it may, it may change, I suppose. Yes, yeah, the only thing that I, I knew before to start shooting was that I have... a. Uh, a lover, an Irish man, it's the only thing that I, I knew, the only thing that Ken told me. Well, well we, ha we have a contract, so we know more or less how many days we have to be here, but even this is not, that, you know, um, you can't take it for granted that <laughs> it's a... Uh, I don't know, I don't know what, what is going to happen to me. I don't know if, if I'm going to die or if I'm going just to leave the trenches and go away. I don't know, nothing. <laughs> Not a job for a great man, is it really? Is it? Not a job for adults. Ken keeps his distance by working with long lenses and um, keeps the crew as far away from the action, really, as, as possible. I mean, it's not always possible. Just so the people on the screen feel more at ease and feel more like they're in a real situation. I think in an ideal world, Ken would prefer to have nobody present while the film is being made and and um, for the actors just to, to live it. I see him as a magician, you know, he's, uh, he has created this incredible group of people who is work, which is working incredibly well. Sometimes our relationships are bigger than the relationships in the movie, you know, it's something really strong what is happening with the crew and with the, with the section of, of militiamen. But him, he's always like, he's uh, really is like a god. He's all the time watching us, um, observing us. Uh, I, I think he's taking his own notes. ¿Cómo es Ken? Para mí Ken es básico, importantísimo que afortunadamente haya gente como él, sobre todo en, el, en, el, en los medios de comunicación que ahí está enfrente de la tele, el cine y con películas así, que, que tenga los huevos, ¿no? De, de, de hacer esto. Porque en, aquí en España nadie le apoyaría. Muy poca gente. Muy poca gente. I mean, when you see that the guy cares so much, I mean, he works more than anybody else. I mean, we're putting in 14-hour days, he's putting in a 20-hour day. You know, so when you see somebody eating the same shit you are, and he's doing it for something that he really believes in, it makes it easy to go the extra mile. We had a big battle in Mirambel, so we all knew that um, someone was going to, to die because it's a battle and they're there are suits and grenades and everything. And everybody was so frightened because nobody wanted to die, because that to die means leave the movie. But no one was saying, I don't want to leave the movie. Everybody was saying, and I don't want to die. With truth, you know, it was so tender see people saying, I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to die. It's incredible, you know. Turn over. Don't forget it. Chicos, 
como si me lo acabara de creer. Danke. I want you to know how sorry I am for what happened. I should have opened fire, but I didn't, and they, and they, they shot him, and that's all there is to it. The thing is, he was... Uh, he was a good man, he, he was a brave man. We're all going to miss him. Los compañeros y la compañera han sido asesinados por los fascistas. Porque eran gente del pueblo. Porque como nosotros luchaban por la revolución. In a way, we're, we're several paces back compared to how they were in Spain, where they were people on the march and saw the possibility of change. Viva la revolución! I mean, now, by and large, we don't see that possibility. So, first of all, we have to revive that sense of power, sense of strength, sense of confidence. We have to show them that actually change is possible. That working people have the power to do it. But it's, it's, a, long, it's a long process because the left has suffered so many defeats. The established political parties are saying it has to be the market. The market is the only is the only mechanism that that can be progressive, and to that extent, history has stopped. And to reassert other ideas that, in fact, the market will always lead to mass unemployment, will always lead to poverty, will always lead to exploitation, will always lead to war, and that the values of collective strength as a way of providing for our needs and generating a more tolerant, less abrasive place to live in. Reasserting that is, is a very tough job today. While we're taking the shots, in order to make a good picture, uh, we may have to just come in and move something an inch to the left or an inch to their right. Ken is an exception. Most directors won a few prizes and then scurry off to the States. And it seems that their idealism goes with them, it dies. But he's retained his kind of radical vision. There's a great passionate concern. He's not like some visiting anthropologist. He goes there with a very deep concern with what's happening. He identifies, he allies himself with his people, and this comes out on his movers. <coughs> OK, so now we can go to the position where you're into the room for the first time yeah. and looking at the, the, uh, the pictures uh -huh. and the books and the richness of the room. We have to develop a, a different uh, current within the cinema. And of course, you, know, you can't do that with one film at a time every few months, um, because it will always be outside the mainstream. I mean, it's still a question of telling a good story, a story that you feel in your bones is really accessible, it's not a difficult, and it's fun, and it's sad, and it's tragic, and it's touching, and it's uh, energizing, and all those things. Perhaps because it's told in a slightly different way, or if what you're doing doesn't fit that, then it tends not to be commercial. When the market has unified the product so much, it's very difficult to keep a, a different voice. Methods are 
are only methods, and the only thing that matters is what you get on film. And, you know, it's dangerous to make a fetish of how you do something. I mean, in this case, it was very important that that people knew what they were fighting for and why they were fighting and where they come from, and that they they established relationships within the group. That there were the right balance between having some military experience and having very little, and the balance between being idealistic and being pragmatic, um, and for those tensions to work themselves out in the group. <laughs> It's a question of finding people who have some things in common with the characters and some will identify with a point of view, in this case, and with a, an emotional journey, um, and live through it. And also experience it with all the possibilities open, because um, that's... That's how you go through life, isn't it? You don't know what's going to happen next. And you're making judgments all the time about what, what you think will happen and what you ought to do. And um, that's what I feel has got to be in the mind of the people in the film. It's not closed off. You don't know what's going to happen. If we disguise our aid, what will we do? Not only fascism, it's the same thing that capitalism is. It's the same thing. I don't know what you are fighting for, but we are fighting for revolution. Don't insult me. I know what I'm fighting for, and I don't need you to define capitalism or fascism for me, okay? I'm here for the same goddamn idea to fight in this war, okay? But these people cannot collectivize anything if they're dead. It doesn't make sense to hide our political aims. To remember that outside these windows there are two million landless peasants. Two million from the day they were born have had nothing, no hope. But do you mean the fascist line is only over the road? What's the point? Well, it's the we collectivise this village and, and in five days' time we could all be dead and this village will be back with the fascists and those two million land landless peasants will be dead. I think it's not the right time to fight each other but together. No, we, we know the price. All of us know the price of the freedom, and we've, we've lost a lot of friends. The great fear you, you have, I suppose, as a, as a filmmaker, is that you will, all kinds of extraordinary things will develop, and you don't, you don't capture them on the camera. And that, that was a permanent nightmare in this, because we had a terrific group, and some extraordinary things developed between them. And I was just scared at the end of every day that we hadn't captured this. And I, just keep my fingers crossed that we have. the 12 offers for the moment. Thanks, lock that off. Okay, have we got Ian? Oh, Where's Andy? He's on the other route. Well, they've really got to go, uh, Ray, because we're, we're doing this with the ambient light. And Julian, yeah. where's, where's Ian? Okay. 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 Ray, Ray, Andy's on the route over there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't go now, we, again we lose it. What is actually happening in May 37 is that finally the communists in particular are making a move to finish with the revolution. They try and take over the telephone exchange, which is held by the anarchists. This sparks off a rebellion in Barcelona. The workers rise up against the communist-dominated administration take over the city. Um, this represents really the end of the revolution. The, 
effect of this fighting is that it's used as an excuse to uh, suppress certain revolutionary organizations, in particular the POUM, the PUM, their leader is arrested, he um, is, dies tortured uh, by Soviet agents uh, near Madrid, and many other leaders are arrested. Yes, I mean, the, the more we can do, yeah, no, none of those lamps need altering. Yeah, Here we go. And yeah. okay. turning over. Turning over. Are you English, mate? Yeah. Where are you from? Manchester. Fucking hell, from Liverpool. What are you doing here? I don't know. Why aren't you over here with us? Fuck knows! Good, that's good. That's not bad at all. How was that? Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Barcelona for me was like the thing that kind of changed things because I understood things for the first time because I didn't understand what I was anything about the character. And when I got to Barcelona, things just made sense. Okay, okay. we'll just do one more. We may not take it that far, but that's good. There's going to be two more, they won't try on the first one. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know, I was confused back then. I'm confused now, but a different kind of confusion. I mean, sometimes I'd, have, I'd go and read the script and I'd have a real conflict about what I was doing. Coming to Spain and meeting these people, because they are still politically active and they are still motivated politically, makes you sort of think, well, what's wrong with fucking British youth that were just seemingly dead? It seems like they they suffered like Franco for so long, and when he finally died, the amount of like suppress that that went like 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 a pressure cooker. These people are so like alive. Politically, politically alive and and they're alive in every way. They just want to have a good time and, and want to change things and see. They don't see it, it as being impossible to change. At the beginning, there is some feeling in the Spaniards like shit. Why 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 is an Englishman telling? our story. I think now is that, that that feeling has disappeared. But for me as a Spaniard, in making a, a, a film of the Civil War, World, the most amazing, amazing thing is that I didn't know that, that that happened with the poem, with the um, Republican band, that the own Republicans kill poem people. Well, I didn't know that story, you know. Es la guerra de nuestros abuelos, que se dice, pero eh, durante todo el, el franquismo, a la gente de mi generación, los que tenemos entre 25 y 35 años, mmm, no nos hemos enterado de nada. Y nuestros padres, que son los hijos de la guerra, los que nacieron, mi padre tiene 56 años, no, no tenía mucho miedo. A él le pegaban cuando hablaba catalán. Incluso después de la muerte de Franco y la transición, todo esto mmm, la gente no lo tenía muy claro, ¿no? que trajo Franco en Madrid quieren entrar mientras que de milicianos los moros no pasarán mientras que de milicianos los moros no pasarán Robert thinks that the, the eye of the film is, is the eye of an observant person in the trench it's like a sympathetic observer or a wry observer rather than a um, uh, bird's eye view so in that sense, the the people are foreground and the landscape becomes incidental. Viva la República! What does become a pressure is the extent of the caravan trail you have to take, carry on within those sort of vast uh, tents and eating business that goes on and uh, but in a way that's that's necessary I mean because you can only work for so long and then you people need to recharge I mean it's a pressure to keep everybody connected to the project and that that gets more difficult the bigger the unit and sometimes you know you lose it and you lose people and you lose contact with people and the important thing is to have to have everyone focused on a certain a certain mood a certain 
little event. If the actors feel a level of concentration on what they're doing, that's a great cushion for them. If there is no sense of belief around them, they've got to do it all in their head, and that's terribly difficult. I mean, that's why, you know, like having a, having a row of seaside umbrellas along is just not fair on the people who are got to do a scene where they've got to put their lives on the line. Okay, go ahead and board it there. And board! Yeah, that was uh, 342 take two, board on end, A and B cameras running parallel with... Uh, okay, very good. Yeah, with uh, ID 17 on that roll number 32. I think we should check the gate. Check the gate! Uh, my feeling is we should Only wrap little, there, keep our powder dry, and really go for it tomorrow morning. Ken's had so much shit given to him by, like, I mean, the British press by Britain in general, basically, where no one appreciates his films at all. And he's, he's been gone for 30 years because he believes in it. And so somehow managed to wangle the money off somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's still, and he's still committed to doing it in, in, in his way. When I'm sure most people have just said to him, Ken, why don't you just try doing this? Oh, you could do it, you know, you can make some money on this one or do an advert. <laughs> we kept with it, we kept with it. The film put in front of you the fact that it's possible to fight together and it's great to fight together, and we are always more. This is a very important thing in the film. I had a free hand, really. I can't blame anybody. Um, if it's no good, I can't have no excuses. The only pressure was to do justice to the story, to do justice to the writing, to do justice to the people in the film, to do justice to all the other people, veterans who we met, who are heroes. and. Um, and so to do justice to their experience, to their heroism, to their suffering to all the people who didn't survive. I think it's very good that this film is made. I think it will have a result positive in the sense of giving to know the people what it is liberty and what it is to lose liberty. I think you can't really wind down until you finish shooting and then it's very difficult. Because, I mean, I'm basically lazy, I think. And you've got to keep yourself screwed up to the sticking point. <laughs> Otherwise, um, once you let it go, you know, you're lost, really. And, I mean, I was lost on too many occasions. And so you, you've got to get to bed thinking of the next day and you've got to wake up thinking of the, what you're going to say at 8 o'clock. I mean, 8 o'clock is the, is the moment of horror when you've got to know where to put the camera. Here we go, then. And turning over. Turn over. And in we go. Vamos! Venga! Vamos! 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 durante la guerra, pero al cabo de, de tantos años volverlo a revivir, claro, me ha emocionado.
The process of betrayal really has just, just been a constant throughout the century. We're kind of in this seemingly unending crisis, which we can't escape from. I mean, it's quite clear that that system will never reach equilibrium. The thing will never balance. Um, so in the end, yes, it has to be changed. like to stay a minute because I've got something to say. Um, the other day I found this among my granddad's papers and I'd just like to read it out. I'm really sad that my granddad didn't live to see like true socialism because I know he fought for it but at least he warmed his hands in the fire. So this is a poem by William Morris. Join in the battle wherein no man can fail. For whoso fadeth and dieth, yet his deed shall still prevail. Well, I think when you have an experience like we had doing it and you tap the commitment and the memory of commitment of people and you actually see, even if it's only a comparative handful of people, um, really make a commitment to the politics of the people they were playing, which were revolutionary politics. I mean, you do realise there is a world to be won there. There is an energy, there's an enthusiasm, there's an idealism, there's a belief in change, which is to be gained. And working with these people makes you realize that change is possible. I don't know how far off it is, but, in, but th that experience has to make you an optimist in the long term. I've never actually met Ken. I believe I've seen him around. Someone says I've seen him. He's the guy that always says, one more time. Oh, is that him? That's him. I thought he was the assistant. His innocence is lethal. He's got a steel spying up his back. He knows what he wants and he gets it. Yeah. I think it'll be great. Yeah, but yeah. Nothing to do with us, though. Right. <laughs> nothing to do with us whatsoever. Entirely to do with somebody else.